How's it going YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Blade. Let's have a look at what's coming up this week. I can't cope with him. He keeps laughing at me. So if you've been following us for a while then you'll know the sketch and the format of these videos. It is currently Sunday and I am at the unit and the reason for that we lost a day on Friday which would have been in the last video which means I'm having to come up here today to do some prep. Had to already run to a screw fix this morning to grab a new set of boots and that's because I went pumpkin picking with my son and my wife yesterday and absolutely ruined my old pair and it was about time for some new ones. So one of the first things we've got to do this morning is get the Trimax on the tractor and that is because we've currently got the verti drainer on the back from last week so we need to jump in the tractor and get the verti drainer off. And for anyone that's got a tractor knows whenever you go anywhere near a tractor, this happens straight away. There we have it, the Trimax is now on the back of the trailer and I'm ready to make a about a two hour journey down to the site, ready for the morning. The reason I'm doing this is mainly just to test whether the early mornings impact my week. If I can get the tractor down there today, normally on a Monday I'm waking up at like half three, four in the morning to get the tractor down there. So I wanna see if it positively impacts my week because normally by the weekends I'm absolutely knackered by waking up at four every morning. Let's jump in the tractor and get on the road. So it's now Monday morning and I've got the Trimax dropped and I start cutting this grass. And although it is still dark, I managed to crack on with the CHC Auto Steer GPS navigation system we have fitted to the tractor. So the lads have just turned up on site, so I'm just gonna jump out, stop a minute, catch up with them, and make sure that they know what the crack is this morning. Good morning. You all right? Yeah. Tired. Oh. <laughs> Join us. Oh, look at that. Hey? So now that the lads are here, we can start concentrating on all of the other parts of the school. And they're running around doing all of the smaller bits of grass that the tractor can't get. We've got Ash on the Hustler doing all of the wide open spaces. And we've also got Cameron on the right stander doing all of the edges and then all of the smaller areas that the Hustler or the tractor cannot get. And we can start to put this all together and start finishing off the maintenance at this school to get it ticked off of this morning's schedule, which hopefully moving on to the next one. Happy day, so I'm all done with the tractor. The lads are still running around the edge of the field, but the rest of the school is done. They just need to do the strimming. Once that's done, we've got some hedge work to do also, but I'm now gonna go ahead and jump on the trike and get all the line marking done. So first things first, to get my paint mixed up and we get the trike in action. We've got around 11 pitches to mark here, so I try and do it in quick succession to tie up with the lads finishing all of the work that they have to do around the school. And just like that, we are done. Okay, so the plans have actually a bit changed yet again. Would you believe it? That's not like Cut Crew, is it? So we've done all of the grass, all of the line marking, the lads have run around the site, everything is looking really, really good. We've just gone to do the hedge that I mentioned earlier, that's an ad hoc job. So on this contract, the facilities team look after their own hedges themselves, which is fine, but there's a really, really large hedge that they asked us to take a look at. We quoted it probably around six weeks ago with hopes to do it in half term. Just popped to take ash up to take a look at it, and it has grown absolutely ridiculously. So. What we're going to have to do is reschedule it and bring a trailer because for what we thought was only going to be three or four waste bags is probably a trailer full plus three or four waste bags. So yeah, it's grown absolutely mental in about six weeks. I should have probably popped my head in last time we were here and checked that, so that's on me. But this visit has took really, really long today, so hopefully we can make some time up. 
So trying to make that time up, we jump straight to the next site and get all of the kit off. We all have to get fuel on the way, so we actually end up arriving at the same time. And with me starting the boundary in the tractor and the lads running around starting to do their bits on the right and the hustler, they've also got a fair bit of strimming to do as well. But once the borders are done, I can get cracking, setting those stripes down with the Trimax and try and get this place looking tip top. This might be the last mow, so we're gonna try and put all we can into it with the help of the CHD Auto Sear system. You know the score. And with this side now done, there's a, an academy pitch that separates two sides. We can now move on to the other side. Of course, making sure that our nice double stripes line up with the first side. So from either end of the field, everything matches up. And now that all of the grass cutting is done, I'll go ahead and jump on the trike to get the free football pitches and the lacrosse pitch sorted so we can finally move on and complete this site. Right, we're all sorted at this site. Ash is just packing the van up. The tractor's good to go. We're gonna be leaving the tractor down here. We've still got one site left today. It's just four 11 v 11 pitches and some community areas, so it shouldn't be too bad. Jump in the vehicles and head over there now. As soon as we get over there, we start making headway on the right and the Hustler. We've also got a fair bit of strimming to do around the community centre. We're using the Hustler to get the 11v11s done and I'll explain why right now. So we are all done and that is the lads on their way home. I'm just gonna lock the gates up and I'll fill you in for the day. So you probably noticed that we did this with the Hustler rather than the tractor. And that's mainly because our sites tomorrow are right next to the site that we was before this. So we thought we'd just jump on the Hustler and do these pitches. Only four 11 v 11s, so not too bad. It's not taken that long at all. Today, we have covered 42 acres. So let's put that on the acre counter for the week. And we might play a little bit of a game with this later on in the video. So get your guessing hats on. Anyway, that's enough for Monday and I will see you tomorrow. So we start Tuesday off with the water gushing out these posts and we had to get them removed. I've done a video on how we did it, so go check that out on the channel. We also had all of the grass cutting to do and the rest of the site maintenance here, but we didn't film a lot because we needed to get cracking. After the school, we moved over to one of our football club clients and I started off with the smaller area, which is you, what you can see here. The ground is mega boggy in some places, so I'm having to be really, really careful. Starting off with my borders, I actually picked a 10 border width in and that's to protect the football pitches so when I start with my stripes as you can see here I've got lots of space at the other end either end of the pitches to turn around and not leave a mark in the tractor oh dear oh dear oh dear cutting the grass on the tractor I noticed that it's leaving a strip and we've had this before my suspicion is that we might have snapped a deck belt on the Trimax but I'm going to get the covers off now and we'll take a look. And if I have, we're going to have to come up with a strategy. As suspected, the belt has snapped. Press one to part. Good morning, how can I help? Hi mate, I was wondering if you had any uh, Trimax Pegasus deck belts in stock at all? Uh, let's have a look for you. Uh, Trimax one, same, we got 10 of. Uh, £22 free each, that. Perfect mate, can I pop over now? I'll grab two of them if possible. So whilst Ash is trying to remove some of the old belt from the bearings, I jump straight in the van and head over to George Brown's. It's not too far away, so luckily I get there mega mega quick, go in, grab my belts and I also grab a spare, just in case to leave in the tractor. When we get back, we get started with fitting the new belts and before we know it, maybe. <sighs> hey presto. Both belts are back on and I grabbed a spare from George Brown's just in case. For next time, we're now gonna run it up before we put all the covers back on, make sure it's working, get back to it. Ash has already finished the other side on the Hustler. So once I'm back in business, I've got to mow this side. Ash can line mark the other side, then line mark this side and we're back to it. Happy days. Thank God for George Brown's. So before we get all of those covers back on, we're just gonna give it a quick blow down and a test. So I get the PTO started and Ash checks to make sure that nothing is in the way. And as it's running up, we notice that the old belt is still hitting a bearing. So a stop, we remove it and we try again. And with this now, the second time of trying the new belt, 
Luckily, we have nothing in the way, so we can get everything back together. Happy days, test two went well. All that remains, get the covers on, start mowing again. So now I fully appreciate having a good dealer network around us. Within 40 minutes, we are back on the road from breakdown and I can start smashing out these stripes, ready for Ash to carry on line marking this side. As I mentioned before, he'd already done the other side. So once this field isn't done, which it nearly is, I can just pop over and make sure he has had no dramas. This side was cut with the Hustler and the lines have started to go down. So we can check up on Ash and make sure he is happy what could have been a nightmare turned out all right just gonna leave ash and cameron here now to finish off the line marking gonna take the tractor to where we're gonna be leaving it overnight then we've got a residential so pop over there get picked up and head to the residential so after I get picked up, we head over to the residential and Ash has to tie his tow mater skills reversing down into the resident's house. As soon as we get there, we get all of the kit off and we can get cracking. It's fairly straightforward. I get started on the right doing the front of this lawn and the front lawn area doesn't take long at all. Just going up and down on the right standard to try and pit some stripes on the ground. And once that's done, I can reflect on the work. We've still got bits and bobs to tidy up around the edges, but I can then move on to the lawn out the back of the house. There's a fair bit of leaves that need blowing off the lawn and collecting, but we get that done. And also Ash works on getting the driveway clear of any debris and leaves for the client. Once all of this is done, we can reflect and start to pack the van back up. So there we have it, we're all done at this property. Ash is just doing the final bits, packing the trailer up and we are good to go. On the way home, I've got to run to the bank to pay checks in from parish councils. Why they still pay via check, I have no idea. Hopefully one day maybe they'll join the times of backs. Anyway, adding to the acreage calculator today, is 26 acres. Tomorrow we are back at it, so we shall see you in the morning. I ain't no good at this. I don't think I can do it. Fuck it. I can't cope with him. He keeps laughing at me. Okay, Ash bottled it, but we are on site. Um, yeah, got tractor. I've got a tractor, bloody hell. It's one of those days. Yeah, we're gonna jump in the tractor to get the grass cut. The lads are gonna do all of the boundary work, the strimming, and then we've got the line marking to deal with after. Nice straightforward site, mainly just grass cutting. Lots of little intricate bits, but uh, yeah, jump in the tractor, get it fired up, get the GPS loaded, and let's get cracking. GPS on. Trimax unlocked and dropped and we're good to go. So we get started with the borders and yet again, as I mentioned earlier on in the video with the ground getting wet, I'm going to do nice, probably a three or four width border to ensure we've got lots of space to turn around so we don't scrub the grass. Once the borders are done, I can get started with my stripes as the lads are sorting out all of the other bits on the smaller mowers and with the strimmer. So we're cracking on with it, we're getting on really, really well. Only issue I'm having today is I'm having to cut the grass twice. Still grown absolutely tremendously here. Um, and I probably don't need to cut it twice, but I'm trying to get it down. So hopefully the next time we visit will be the last cut. So it's taking a little bit longer than it should do, but we're hopefully saving ourselves some work in the future. And it looks a lot neater and tidier. So with lots still going on round the site and us still cutting the grass with the tractor, Ash has finally got some space to start the line marking. Because I'm double cutting, it is taking a lot longer, but it does look incredible. We're nearly there. We've just got a small section now to finish. I've already cut it once. We're just going over it for the second time. With all the line marking coming together and the field finally done, we can think about moving to the next one. So I am over at the next site. The lads are just finishing off the line marking, any blowing and tidying up. We had reports of motorbikes going on this square from the dredged Facebook. So basically a post was put on the community group to say that a motorbike was riding up and down on the square. You can see tire marks, but it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, which is good. 
We still need to refurbish these squares, so what we'll have to do is once the refurbishments have taken place, we'll just have to barrier them off as best as we can to stop anyone going on them because obviously the client is paying a fair bit of money to get them refurbished. Anyway, the Trimax is dropped and we're ready to cut. The GPS should be loaded. So let's get on with cutting this site. So the first thing I did was mow a large section around the square to protect the square and you can see that on the lighter stripe in here. I then get the GPS fired up and we can start doing the circular stripes around the outfield and it's all coming together really, really well. The grass has stayed down here nicely so it was a pleasure to do. Ash and Cameron are here buzzing around doing all of the smaller bits. The tractor work is now done so we can concentrate on all the other areas of the site such as the strimming, any hedge work so that need doing and all of the smaller verge areas around the site. It's all fairly straightforward. Once that was done we moved straight over to the next site and I jumped straight in the tractor to get this sorted. Again leaving a nice wide border I then get started with my stripes to try and get this completed and a little bit ahead of before the lads get here. But they're now here, sorting out all of the other bits, flying around like buzzy bees, like we are, cut crew doing it the best we can, trying to get this site under maintenance before it gets dark, and also putting down some fantastic stripes on the ground. We absolutely smashed that, that's all done. Literally just the line marking and locking up to do. I'm gonna head to the next site and try and get ahead with the tractor. So over at the next site, it's mega straightforward. It's basically a large open field and I can get cracking straight away with the grass cutting. And I have just finished cutting the grass here. That was mega quick, another six acres in the tractor. This site in total is seven and a half leaving today's total at 28 acres. We can slap that on the acre counter down in the corner. Now tomorrow we're on a very interesting job. We've got the sidearm flail on hire that you saw us take delivery of yesterday. Lads have still got to finish up here. They've got to do all the exterior parts and the line miking, and then they're done for the day. But I'm gonna be taking the tractor to a new location tonight because at the end of this week, We've got some exciting news. So it's now Thursday and we are all on site and I am here with the Kubota and the sidearm flail. The lads have already started to knock back some of the hedging, some of the areas that the flail can't reach. We have already started. So I've started to do the tops and now I can start pushing those sides in. The customer wants a major reduction and it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of time to get this done. But slowly I'm working with it and the Bonford flail is doing a really, really good job. You can see how much here we have taken off the sides are now pushing back the bottom. Okay, we're getting on really, really well. I've just had to run and grab some fuel. You can see back there, maybe just about, in the distance, that's where we started. We've probably done around, I'd say, 400 meters so far. We've probably got 200 meters left. And then there's a small area around the back as well that also needs some attention. I haven't filmed much because I've been concentrating quite a lot, but we're gonna try and get some more footage on this bit here. But yeah, really, really impressed with the Bomford flail. Really mega easy to use. It's just on a little joystick. And within about three or four minutes of using it, it's like second nature. It's really simple to use. So would definitely recommend. And it is something, if we can pick up more work, that I will look at in the future for our tractor. But yeah, let's crack on and get this done before it gets dark. So we are now pretty much there. There's just a small area that I need to grab with the hand hedge cutter, but the boys are now relieved and they can start packing up and get going. I've then got to do the other side of the warehouse that I mentioned, just any overhanging branches. And there's also a small hedge just underneath the flower that you can't see here that also needed pushing back and tidying top and sides. Ooh. Right, it's about seven probably. Yeah, it's about seven. What a day it's been. Again, I apologize for not showing you in depth the flail, but this isn't the last day that we're using it. So I'm sure within the next couple of days, we'll be able to show you much better content with this, but we had a lot to do today. Yeah, I'm really happy that we've managed to get it done in a day. We've fell behind quite a lot uh, recently. 
So it just takes the pressure off a little bit for me. Finding it mega stressful. At the end of the season, this is when we should be able to relax a bit, but we still seem to be having to cut grass. Line marking is fading rapidly because of the rain, the grass growth that we're getting. And yeah, all these ad hoc jobs that we need to get done just seem to be piling up. But yeah, it's weird because I feel like because the days are shorter now, it's dark in the morning and dark at night, the days feel longer when in fact in the summer we probably do longer days. But um, yeah, definitely looking forward to the winter rest this year. Bloody hell, what was that? But yeah, anyway, I've now got a two hour journey back in the slowest tractor in the world. But yeah, the lads digged in today. Um, it was fairly straightforward. Just basically tidying up the bits that the flail couldn't get, but a steady 11 hours for them. And probably for me today, by the time I get home and all sorted out, I'd say 16 hours, but yeah. Nothing to add to the acre counter today, but we can add four kilometers of hedging. See you tomorrow. Friday, day after the night before, here we go. Ash and Cameron are here, they're just loading up the van, getting all the kit ready, and we're off to do a parish today. We're also gonna be taking the flail to do some of the hedges in the parish as well. So yeah, well-rounded day, lots going on. Right, so we're on site at the parish council. You can just see the hedge here that we've got a flail back. We've got the tractor and we're just about to set some cones out and can just see Ash in the distance because the boys are doing all of the grass cutting as I'm doing this today. So let's grab some footage and get this sorted. So as mentioned, the boys are running around the parish doing all of the grass works and there's several areas that we need to use the flail, but we're gonna start off here next to the highway to try and push this hedging back to relieve some of that paths for the pedestrians to get to the cemetery or to go for their country walks. So I've already done one pass with the sides and I'm just layering it going up and up and up on each level to try and push this back, negating with the traffic as they ignore my cones and sides. Taking it really, really slow, having to move around any obstacles such as posts uh, as I go and just concentrate as much as I can. Once we've done the sides, we are going to be knocking the top down a fair bit and uh, try and see how much of it we can reach from this side. We're actually not meant to do the tops, it's actually the farmer's responsibility, but I'm gonna do as much of it as I can to save him a job and also get some practice in because it is actually quite a lot. You can just see uh, here, there are some areas that we're gonna to have to do by hand around the posts where the flail can't get, but I'm just working through it to try and do the best I can to knock this back and get this hedge in tip top shape giving more access to all the pedestrians. Just working slowly and methodically, concentrating to ensure that we don't damage George Brown's flail. But it's been a lot of fun. There we have it, that is all sorted. Ash is just blowing the path down now. I'll move my cones out of the way and we have done this section of hedge flailing. Mega easy to do, you just have to concentrate a fair bit. And the only thing that makes it hard is the cars ignoring cones and signs, but other than that, spot on. You can see the end result here, and I did manage to get quite a lot off the top, but there's a small bit that the farmer's gonna have to do in his own time. So I'm really rubbish at flailing and filming, I just get carried away, but the parish council has had all of the hedges that needed to be done flailed. The lads are still finishing off there and they're coming to pick me up now. Let's show you a little size comparison of the two tractors together. There we are, the Kubota M4063 and the Massey Ferguson 5455 sitting proud together. And there is something in this clip to give away what is happening next week. So as soon as the lads pick me up, we head to the residential and start getting all of the kit off and I jump straight on the right to do all of the smaller areas that Ash can't do on the Hustler. He starts with the large acreage areas and all of the big bits and I crack on with doing all of the smaller areas whilst Cameron is running around doing all of the strimming around the obstacles and the edges. As you can see, Ash is making good progress with the large acreage lawn 
This is a residential, it's one of the only residentials right. we do. Uh, in fact, no, it's one of two that we do. So yeah, we're cracking on well with this. You can just yeah. see that the ground is starting to give up. So this is probably gonna be the last cut here. And I'm struggling around all of the obstacles, trying to get footage as I do it. Crouching down underneath the trees. They definitely need crown lifting over the winter but I'm doing all of the important bits that Ash can't reach on the Hustler, such as the border work and any little nooks and crannies on paths such as this to get every section of the field done. With Ash nearly done, this is his last little section we can think about packing up. Look what you've done. And I am still going. We've just been back to the unit. I'm now on my own. I've got the trailer with the hustler and the line marker and I've just arrived at the mighty Find and Volta. So with the daylight quickly diminishing, I get the trike straight off and we practice our one armed line marking and get the pitches down as soon as possible. There's not much to do here and I do it in quick time. Happy days, I've not even checked the time. But I've just finished. We've done uh, two full size 11v11s, a junior 11v11 and a 7v7 and a 9v9 in blue. But that is not the end of the week. You join me and it is Saturday and I've just been to do some line marking early in the morning. When I got to site it was dark so I didn't film too much but I've done four pitches. I've still got some grass to cut today and some line marking to do on one of our elite level pitches because there's a game tomorrow. So we're gonna have to go and sort that. And I've also got a few other bits and bobs that I need to tie up. And it looks like I'm gonna be working tomorrow as well, which I'm probably not gonna film. I'm just gonna stick the headphones in and crack on with it. Because who likes working on a Sunday? Next week's gonna be an exciting week. We've got some big news as a business and also I'm going to be traveling to Soltex and so make sure you don't miss next week. It's probably going to be the last week of grass cutting because next week we have got predicted rain and the ground is really really starting to soften up so now you're going to be following our journey into winter and how we combat that and the type of work that we get into winter. Let me know in the comments if you guys are mega busy this winter and what stuff you've got booked in. Are you going to struggle this winter? Is there anything we can do to help? But I think it's about time to wrap this video up and I just want to thank you all for watching yet again. If you could share it to someone that might like our videos, I'd really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe and we shall see you in the next one.